What's the most legendary work meltdown you've seen? My PE teacher in the 9th grade got fired for this crap. She tells us to walk laps around the school for cardio day. Some kids decided to run and managed to finish 3 laps by the time the rest of us finish like 2. When we finish our second lap, we see the runners sitting, and the teacher just scream get your goddamn puny butts over here. She proceeds to push the whole class onto the track in 97 degree weather and makes us sprint a mile and says that anybody who gets below 730 is to run it again it was a 90 minute period. Everybody finishes, and she sits us down and calls us a multitude of bad words, and tells us that we should have finished 3 laps like they did instead of only 2, even though she told us to walk, not run, and they were running. The whole time we notice that a girl isn't here anymore. We later found out she had to be taken away in an ambulance because she had asthma and our B of a teacher denied her of her inhaler. So she fainted and was taken to the nurse's office immediately. I worked at Taco Bell while in high school. One of my co-workers was this guy who was really friendly, but also really strange. He was obsessed with being a straight edge kid and drew the X's on his hands, and the whole 9 yards. He had a high pitched, but pleasant voice, and spoke in an overly polite manner. Anyway, he had put in his two weeks and on his last day he was working the front counter register. This lady walks up to order and he just stares at her. After a few seconds she says um, can you take my order in his very calm and polite voice he says oh, I am sorry mom, but I cannot. There was another awkward pause and she says um, well why not he responds with, because I am a dinosaur. He immediately started growling and roaring at her, and he walked back and forth behind the counter like a T-Rex. He did this until the GM who was back making food realized what was going on. On her way up to the counter he calmly clocked out and left. The GM had to apologize over and over again to the poor woman trying to order. That kid was a Taco Bell legend for several years. I wasn't there to see it, but my co-workers have talked about the cabinet incident. Last year was my first year of teaching, and I was working in a low income inner city school. People kept saying to me there's no way you could possibly be worse than the last girl we had. When I asked what they meant, I was told that a few years prior the principal had hired a first year teacher. Apparently one day she got so overwhelmed and upset by the behavior of her class that she chucked a ream of paper out the window and then ran into the back room, shut herself in a big cabinet and cried. Her class was unsupervised for a while, apparently none of the kids had told anyone what happened, and when the principal found her, she was curled up on the floor of the cabinet, rocking back and forth and sobbing. Clearly, she was fired soon after that. I didn't stay at that school longer than a year because the principal was the equivalent of Satan, but when I left she said to me despite all the crap you were put through this year from your kids. You're the first teacher I can remember who I never saw cry at school. I'll take that as a compliment, I suppose. <laughs> Writing financial software in the 80s. The systems analyst sitting at her desk near me suddenly burst into tears and wailed it's all so pointless. Money doesn't mean anything. <laughs> this happened only a couple of days ago at my work. I didn't see it but everyone's been talking about it. Apparently girl A came up behind girl B and slapped her on the hard hat and said learn how to do your freaking job. And girl B just freaking lost her crap and went full UFC on girl A. Choke hold. Face punches. Regular choking. Girl A tried defending herself with various building parts as weapons. Both are now fired. But I don't really blame girl B. Girl A is a freaking annoying B and has been pushing everyone's nerves since she started. And I wouldn't want someone like that walking around treating co-workers that way. Someone was bound to take her down a peg eventually. <laughs> Fellow pool guy threw a table into the pool we were cleaning. Apparently he got a text from his cousin that he was borrowing his N64. Reasonable TBH. If someone took my copy of Star Fox 64, even God wouldn't be able to help them. My boss was pretty tightly wrapped. One day I came into the restroom and there she was in a stall smearing her poop on the floor. I recognized her rings and muttering. When she was finished, she cleaned up the worst of it off the floor, somehow got dressed with her icky hands, got washed, and went back to work. 
New hire in her first week rubs co-workers the wrong way, acting as though she's the hottest thing to hit our restaurant since food itself. When told her schedule for the next day, she argued with the manager about her availability. Threats of litigation start coming out of nowhere. She approaches two police officers who are trying to enjoy their meal completely in tears, breaking down and begging them to arrest our manager for firing her unjustly. The help escort her out of the building. This guy in a restaurant kitchen got in a fist fight with a younger guy, punched him in the face, backed up, started shaking his face and doing the Scooby Doo voice. He was nuts. I broke it up and took the other guy out of the kitchen to separate them and came back 10 minutes later and the crazy guy had perfectly cleaned his area, like freaking spotless, and clocked out early and never returned. Never seen or heard from him. Never picked up his last paycheck. Weirdest crap I've ever seen. When you say Scooby Doo voice I just imagined him giving him a quick jab and saying rah rah raggy while in a boxing stance. 9th grade. My English teacher had a breakdown in front of the class. Kept silent but started crying whilst writing on the overhead projector her complaints about the disrespectful kids in her class. When I was an intern we had a high priority project come through that my mentor was working on. Really fast turnaround with many late nights, crappy coffee, and good beer. Anyway it was towards the end of the project and I was finishing bring up on the board at my bench when I heard him muttering quietly to himself. I looked up to see if he needed me and watched him absolutely pound a computer monitor with his fist then grab it, smash it down on the floor before stomping on it screaming there's no god dang DRC era you freaking crap. He calmed down after a bit, got a beer then requested a new monitor. That's when I learned that no matter how mad you are screaming at Altium will not make your sleep deprivation better. First, this involves the new £5 notes. For those who don't know, they're polymer notes. And if you fold them up they tend to stay folded. It's important for the story. I served a customer, a friendly old man with white hair, who paid with a folded five pounds. I put it in the till. A few minutes later my boss was in the till and saw the folded note. He decided that the folds meant it had been rolled up into a tube to snort coke with. He was absolutely adamant. I said no. I just took that note from an old man. He started yelling, rolling the note up in his fingers to make a tube, shouting at me, look, it rolls up like this, don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, don't tell me I'm wrong he kept shouting at me, basically waiting for me to apologize and back down, say I was wrong, but I wasn't so I didn't, he wound up storming off, throwing things and slamming things, he's freaking insane and I should have complained but there would be no point, everyone knows what he's like and no one cares. During grad school a professor in my department had a doctoral student who'd been there a few years, had passed candidacy exams and was writing up the dissertation. I still don't know what truly caused the argument, but they ended up having a shouting matching in the hallway in our academic building one day. Allegedly students wanted to publish results and prof said no because they actually corrected a previously published theory he had first authored. Major fireworks. Student ends up switching to a new lab. Refuses to let professor have the lab research notes, and wrote up his dissertation using the original data funded by the original prof under a different prof. A big deal. Again. Huge drama. That professor submitted his tenure packet one year later. It was unanimously approved by the Dept and College. The provost rejected it, because this former student went to the provost with the prof's original paper. Student's data. The still unsubmitted manuscript the student had written up. Everything. The uni had a rule that if you don't get tenure you have to leave. Prof never could get hired in the states after that and had to go back to his home country in the Middle East. I wish this kind of crap wasn't so common. My older sister got a nasty email from her thesis advisor because she submitted a work for publication that didn't shoehorn in a reference to one of his works. She's been a professor for years at this point. It's not like she's still depending on him to get her PhD. But he's still playing power games. I had a co-worker freak out on a customer at Walmart. I used to be a cashier, and people used to tend to treat us like crap. Anyway, the lady got mad because she couldn't price match some Doritos because it was the wrong size or something. Anyway it escalates. We can't find the CSM and a few minutes later they are screaming at each other. The cashies parting words were I ain't freaking price matching your Doritos. You don't even need those Doritos. 
with your fat butt. But needless to say, that was her last day. Had a customer try to price match great value chips for some godforsaken reason. You can't price match Walmart at Walmart, dumbass. Not too legendary, but she was screaming and throwing crap because she got caught smoking in the parking lot after causing drama non-stop the past few months. Her extremely sunburned overweight shirtless father burst into the store threatening management if they don't give her her job back. I was in court, lawyer, and we were arguing a motion and requesting sanctions against plaintiff's attorney. The judge starts talking and dressing down the plaintiff's attorney, who, now offended, decided it would be a great idea to interrupt the judge, insult the judge, and flat out told him you were too stupid to make it in private practice and you do not know what the frick you are doing. She had been licensed for all of 3 years, she is no longer licensed. I'm in radio and one of the group of stations I worked at had an oldies station, a rock station and a pop station in the same building. We had an announcer who was really eager and wanted to learn and work and was really a great guy, but the big bosses were total jerks to him and were stuck in their old ways of doing things. They treated the announcer, we'll call him Howard, really poorly and Howard used to come in and vent about it. He ended up getting hired at another station but before he left. He went into the music libraries and replaced all the Led Zeppelin songs on the rock station with a gospel song from the oldies station called Trumpets of Jesus for an entire weekend. Anytime Led Zeppelin was supposed to play, Trumpets of Jesus played instead. Howard has since gone on to become program director and has won all kinds of leadership awards. Total legend. A guy I delivered pizza with had his parking spot taken by a guy he hated. He pulled out a giant monkey wrench out of his trunk and smoked him in the back of the head with it. Knocked him out. Yeah he got arrested. And fired. Well, that escalated quickly. From irritated to attempted homicide. I worked in IT and one guy, who was one of the most chill guys I knew, was responsible for the deployment, updates and maintenance of a specific product that generated high revenue. One afternoon I was sitting at my desk and just heard a big crash and saw one of his three monitors on the floor. He stood up, shoved the next monitor over the divider onto the next section's desk, then swiped the third monitor off the other side, picked up his keyboard and smashed it as hard as he could, kicked his chair away and slowly and calmly walked out the department, without saying a word. He came back to work the next day as if nothing happened. Everyone knew the pressure he was under and was very good at his job so nobody said a thing. I used to work in a kitchen in an old folks home. I had a manager named Edward who was a know-it-all piece of uninformed crap. I had a co-worker named E who had a very serious medical condition and required a certain medication at certain points of the day. Edward didn't like E or the fact that she needed to keep her medication on her person. One day E forgot her medication and begged to run home and retrieve it. Edward smugly denied her and told her to finish work. So she tried and ended up briefly collapsing. She was okay but very weak and disoriented. Edward grabbed her by her arm, escorted her to her car handed her the keys and told her to leave. Then he left, to go tell anyone that would listen that he was on drugs and he smelled booze on her. He was in the parking lot and called her mom to take her to the hospital. He was only 20 and very scared. He was discharged that night after some fluids and came back the next day upon hearing what Edward told everyone about her. She stormed into HR screaming for them to bring Edward's butt in the office immediately. As soon as he was called in she whipped her name tag at him. I obviously lingered close by like a nosy bee. She was screaming at the top of her lungs that Edward denied her to go home to get her, her medication. That was on file and HR was very aware of and how freaking dare he accuse her of being a drug addict. And if he really believed she was under the influence of something how stupid was he to put her in a car on the company's property leaving them liable for her damages. At this point much noise can be heard as all three of them are screaming full force at one another. She threatened legal action and stormed out. Well she did take legal action. For a ton of crap including putting a clearly ill person behind the wheel. Not too long after this I also quit. And a few months later Edward was no longer employed by the kitchen but rather was working as a deli boy in the local grocery store. I don't know what happened with these lawsuits but I hope that place and Edward got everything they deserved. Also, honorable mention to R, the maintenance man that threatened to shoot my old boss in the face for being such a dongless weasel. 
Guy who's hard of hearing had to blast the radio. Another guy gets sick of complaining to a dongless manager who does nothing. So he silently rips it off the cubicle and smashes it on the floor. Which is not carpet. And. Hard. Really really freaking hard. Like the dang thing killed his grandmother. With a look of silent but unfathomable rage on his face like Hugh Jackman coming out of the water or whatever in that Wolverine origin movie. It explodes. All the guts capacitors. Coils. Resistors. Transistors. Circuit board etc etc go flying. And then as people are gasping and screaming he just sighs. Satisfied like he's just busted a huge nut and leaves. I pretended to be horrified but I was so happy inside. I'm imagining a clueless almost deaf guy shedding a single tear after seeing his radio smashed. He never heard anyone complain before and thought life was peachy until you hear a helipetrol's co-worker went apa crap. I worked at Chuck E. Cheese as a teenager, and one guy found out he was being fired. He responded to this news by, naturally, slitting his wrists and wiping blood on all the walls in the kitchen. I was coming in as it was ending, but we had to call the police and everything. Bizarre scene. What the frick? We had this girl at work, and she liked to wear pants that showed a significant portion of her butt. Like if her butt crack was the Gulf Coast of the USA with Key West being her butthole we were probably at Tallahassee. Someone complained to her manager. He didn't believe us so we had him sit in a beating behind her and was completely horrified. So he had a conversation with her about proper workplace clothing. Well she never got the message, and she got a phone call from HR giving a formal warning. She flips out. Storms into a meeting, calls her boss a freaking pervert, then proceeds to yell if you want to see my boss then see this and moons the room, and storms off in a blaze of glory. No we're complaining specifically because we don't want to see your butt. Actually it was the quietest most calm meltdown, but it screamed of anger and frustration. So I used to work in a bank's call center, a colleague of mine came in the morning, he came in late and didn't even have his coffee, and logged in. The first caller was a rude butthole who started screaming obscenities so early in the morning. My colleague without saying a word, hung up the phone while the customer was still talking, logged off and put his headset on the table. He walked calmly and get a pen and paper, wrote his resignation and handed it over to his supervisor alongside his access card. He walked out the call center and never came back. All of this without saying a single word. It was the embodiment of the phrase action speaks louder than words. I'm happy for him. In high school I worked at a grocery store and this kid was all peed off at another bagger and swearing in front of the customers. He said he was hoping he'd get fired. I told him he should quit before he gets fired so that it would look better on his resume in the future. A few minutes later I realized he was missing. Then suddenly he comes around the corner from the manager's office, no longer in uniform. He threw his uniform in the trash in front of the manager. Then he looked at me and said loudly I took your advice then proceeded to walk across the front end. Point to each associate saying Everyone was staring at me after and I said I did not tell him to do that. Best I've seen was my 7th grade math teacher. There was a girl who always talked in class. She got moved to the front at some point and she was laughing and giggling as always. After being told to be quiet about 8 times, the teacher is standing front and center in front of her, back to her and writing an example on the board. Girl has one of those plastic pencil boxes all the girls used to decorate sitting on the front corner of her desk. The teacher just cracked. In one smooth motion he spins around, yells shut up and smacks the box as hard as he can and it goes flying 15 feet across the room, smashes into the wall, pencils, freaking, everywhere. He swiftly walks to the door, slams it shut and we could hear pounding on the wall. One brave kid peeks out the window, dude was banging his head against the wall. About 2 minutes later, he walks back in, crickets, not a noise in the classroom. He begins walking around picking up every single pen and pencil, puts them all in the box, places it gently on her desk, and then just continues the example like the nothing ever happened. It was exquisite. If that doesn't describe 7th grade in a nutshell. Not sore but had. 
I was about 7 months pregnant and had just recently been moved to a different office. The new office had all kinds of rules no one informed me or my fellow co-workers of and I kept getting hauled into the office to be told off for things I didn't even know I was doing wrong. Now, if it was just friendly reminders I wouldn't have had a problem but my supervisor was this high and mighty bee that kept belittling me and trying to make me feel bad, and kept commenting on how I wasn't fit for this job. Keeping in mind I had been doing it for over 2 years at this point with the no problems. Time before the blowout she said I'd be written up next time she has to talk to me. So I'm working away, trying my damnedest to not freak up cause I really don't want to be written up and I honestly couldn't handle any more stress. Well I get called into the office with her and our union rep and I see a notice on her desk. I lost IT. I starting yelling and crying and listing off all the horrible things she's been putting me through and how it was unfair for her to treat me like this and how half the crap I wasn't even told about. I think I actually started having a panic attack during the whole ordeal and told the union rep some of the comments she made to me over the past few months. It felt good to get it out and finally put her in her place. She was so taken aback that I stood up for myself. Weed. Freak the frick out, that I ended up being sent home early cause they were worried about my baby's well-being. The notice turned out to just be a list of expectations, only 6 months late, which I had to read and sign but she left me alone after that. One day when I listened to a call this woman had a very slow meltdown over the phone that ended in her in sobs. The caller didn't hear something she said and asked her to repeat herself. My co-worker repeated herself in a really irritated tone and then says why does everyone want me to be mean today to the caller. The girl on the other line is obviously confused and asked her if she was having a bad day and if she needed to speak to someone else. She then says no and that she will be the one helping her. It gets worse. She bombs this call. Like totally does not do her job correctly and makes this painfully obvious to the point where the caller says that she will help her figure this out together and to not cry anymore. This was a help desk type job for other employees. Well they don't and she ends up crying and you can hear her snap at someone else in the office which obviously has the caller insanely concerned. My co-worker goes on a rant about how people are hateful and that she hates this job and that it's too hard for her to do. It wasn't really easy for everyone and tells the caller she's going to be transferred. We had to call back and issue the caller an apology. She responded by asking if my co-worker was going to be okay. We said yes but no, she wasn't. The office manager ended up having to fire her for another call where she was complaining and abusing the caller. Before she was fired she was told she could use her benefits to speak to a counselor because she kept having outbursts at work and everyone was getting worried about her. She said this wasn't the first time she heard that and didn't know why people kept saying it. I still think about her, this was 2 years ago, and wonder if she ever got help. I worked in fast food for years and while it might not be the most intense thing this kid who worked 60 plus hours a week at 17 came into work one day with a completely shaved head because it was more efficient to maintain and it helped him work more. Often, I have never seen someone so young be so dead inside and with that shiny of a head. Just about a month ago now two of the kitchen guys at the restaurant that I bartend at got in an incredibly heated argument over eating but, one was very for tongue punching the old fart box and the other was very, very against it. Every time I went back to grab food they were both getting angrier and angrier. It got to the point of them screaming at each other and pans being thrown before finally they seemed to calm down. About 20 minutes later I go to check on food and only the dishwasher was in the kitchen and no food was even being cooked and a stream of orders was still coming out of the printer. Apparently the argument started back up and to solve it once and for all, they went to the parking lot and beat the living crap out of each other. They came back in bruised and quite bloodied and tried to go back to cooking food like nothing happened. Five minutes later the owner stormed in with two guys that weren't working to cover the rest of the shift and fired both of them as they tried to defend their arguments over eating butt to the owner while the entire staff tried to stifle our laughter. I was hoping they went out back to settle it by trying out both ways on each other. I once worked with a guy on salary, whose availability was clearly abused, who used to joke that he just wouldn't come in tomorrow, then one day he didn't come in. In fact, no one could figure out where he was. Turned out he moved states and got a new job and just didn't bother telling his boss until he was already long gone. Good on him. It was a call center and probably 80 people were working at the time. All of our cubicles are on the same floor. 
She sends an email to our boss and CCs the entire office. Something along the lines of frick this place frick the boss frick the brie room basically frick everything and your family. Then the last line. Oh yeah I left my badge on my desk. When I was in college, I worked at an animal hospital. One week, the boss owner was on vacation and several co-workers joked about having a liquid lunch together one day. One girl thought it was such a good idea that she brought a bottle of vodka back to work from her break. She tried to get us all to drink together, while on the clock, but no one else participated. So she was butthurt and drank herself into oblivion. She made an absolute fool of herself. During all this, she hid one person's wallet, asked me on a date, cursed two people out, spun herself around in circles on the floor like a drunk break dancer, and puked all over the only employee bathroom and passed out. The office manager helped her to the couch to sleep it off. As most folks were leaving for the day, she woke up and snuck out to her car and flew out of the parking lot, almost hitting a co-worker. She floored it down the road and eventually ran over a large curb, which messed her small car up, and she left it and walked to her friend's house. Yeah, she got canned the second the boss got back, and even acted surprised about it. Go figure. This particular staffer has been on the edge regarding her being employed for about a year. The office manager finally decided to let her go after the fifth time she brought all five kids, under 10, all, to work and they destroyed our Keurig. It is on film. The eldest picked it up and slammed it on the floor repeatedly. Her ranting featured extremely loud swearing, calling damnation on the manager, and an itemized list of why we all could go to heck. Rubber bands. They're everywhere. One, two, three. Apparently, someone in my office was putting rubber bands all over the place, like around things where it shouldn't be. It annoyed this one girl, and she started accusing people on who did it. Ended up walking through the area the rubber bands were in, yelling about how they were everywhere. Got a work email about how we shouldn't be using work supplies on things other than what they were meant for. TLDR. We had a rubber bandit. First job working as a host at a local restaurant. Our short stalky chef was being particularly pestered by our 15 year old dishwasher boy. Now this dishwasher boy was annoying on any given day. Non-stop talking. Tons of gossiping, whining, and bragging pretty much from the start to end of his shifts. I'm standing at the host station at the tail end of the evening rush when out of nowhere I hear our chef yell, through the walls of the kitchen mind you. That's it you little frick. Followed by the high pitched wail of the dishwasher boy. I only have time to jerk my head towards the racket when the dishwasher boy comes sprinting out of the kitchen. Still screaming. Pass me. Pass customers. And out the door of the restaurant. Seriously, him shrieking as he ran by was the only time I've had a chance to experience the Doppler effect without a vehicle passing by. Seconds later the chef bursts out of the kitchen and follows him out of the restaurant, hot on his heels. What incited the altercation was that the dishwasher boy was being his usual aggravating self and chef, having enough of his crap, told him to knock it off. Dishwasher boy then decided the appropriate thing to do would be to overhand throw a spoiled spoon at chef while he was working at his station. Spoon caught him square in the face and that was that. So now every customer in the restaurant and I are staring in awe into the parking lot as chef closes the distance on dishwasher boy. Dishwasher boy appears to turn and say something to chef in frantic defense for himself. Whatever he is trying to say is cut short as chef grabs his torso with both hands. Literally hoists him up above his head, takes two large steps towards the open steel dumpster, and hurls the dishwasher boy right into it. Chef walks back in and gets back to work without saying a word. Dishwasher boy climbs out and comes back in, crying, and gets back to work. Customers ask me da fuck just happened. Received a lot of customer complaints that night. I went to a private high school. The teachers having 12 to 14 hours days plus their grading wasn't at all weird. One of my teachers ended up completely snapping one day in the middle of the school year. He went on a full on rant at one of his classes because they wouldn't stop talking. He was so angry the entire class of about 30 students was being yelled at full volume for 45 minutes of their class time because of this and left them all in complete shock. For the first 20 minutes of my class period he sat there. Quietly, without addressing the class. I've never seen a group of 20 teenagers so silent in my life and I'm sure I'll never see it again. 
there have been many meltdowns where I work between the same two people. Their father and son and they don't see eye to eye. The son is the president of the company but the father and mother own majority stock. The son is an alcoholic with a violent temper, though he's okay when he isn't drunk. And the father is 84 and suffers from Alzheimer's but is still somewhat there. They get into shouting matches over family drama at work. People have ended up being arrested and fired multiple times due to unrelated reasons. But most of the time it just adds fuel to the fire because someone within the family is the one who's being arrested or fired. I've watched the sun punch holes in the walls and storm out of the building, keys in hand, and speed off down the road. The father goes back to what he's forgotten he's already done. On average, this happens once or twice a week. Sounds like Orange County choppers. My 8th grade teacher got mad at a kid for taking too long sharpening a pencil because the sharpener was broken. She storms over, grabs the pencil, and starts sharpening. But she still can't get it to work. So, she huffs over to the student pencil drawer, rips it open and yanks the drawer so hard it comes flying out. Inside, a pencil sharpener cracked, so a classmate and I tried to clean it up. Then she yelled at us and told us to sit down. Mrs. Crazy then assigns the class a four paragraph essay instead of a Socratic seminar, because we couldn't handle mature topics, which is how she interpreted a few nervous laughs. The period after, she threw a chair at a student. This is the teacher that has broken down in class several times before and has a tendency to throw writing utensils and smart board markers. Not at work, but in 7th grade, one girl ripped the pencil sharpener off the wall and threw it at the whiteboard, denting it. Then she threw a chair at our teacher and the principal had to come remove her from the classroom. Some guy next to me just screamed out Rick, so that's the top currently. My ex coworker we work in an office and this one day she must have just been in a bad mood. We were due to have a staff meeting and she was supposed to arrange it all, hand out agendas, prepare the conference room, lock up etc. It was about 10.05 and the meeting was at 10. My boss, who was also in a bad mood, came down to reception and asked what the heck was going on. She just flipped out on him. She threw a bunch of paperwork at him and just started shouting about how she's fed up of him and is quitting. She then storms out of the office. My boss just stood there, then turned around and went back to his office. The rest of the staff made our way to the conference room for this meeting and as we were sat there, it was really intense and awkward and deathly silent. We were all just looking at our boss waiting for him to react. Surprisingly he stayed super calm. Next thing we know, we hear someone unlock the front door and come in, we assumed it was this lady. We then start to hear furious typing. I mean, she must have been slamming her fingers on the keyboard because we could all hear it from upstairs. So we all just sat there listening to this noise, still deathly silent. Eventually it stops and this lady storms up the stairs and throws her quitting notice at my boss and leaves again. My boss just looks at it calmly, then finally addresses the rest of us and just said that he will not tolerate being spoken to the way she spoke to him and that was pretty much it. We carried on the day as normal. Still makes me laugh to think about it. That was a good day. Dang mister. Boss handled that like a champ. Guy got fired at my work for ordering high cost items and saying they were for clients. They were purchased using state funds and he would just take the items home. Well, he memorized the phone number receptionists used to page people. It's an actual phone number so anyone is able to call it and it'll go through the speakers. So this guy called it and basically said all of these obscenities about people. It was like that scene in the office where Michael roasts people for making fun of him. But this guy was very NSW. It was kind of funny though. The best part was nobody could do anything about it because he was calling from an outside line and wasn't even in the office. This Irish bloke I used to work with, say, Sean, was on a works meal out at a Chinese buffet place and was fairly drunk. Someone made a slight crack at him not even sure what it was but he claimed it was to do with him being Irish. Some sort of pee take. He left it for about 5 minutes but then just suddenly interrupted him talking to others saying you dirty freaking C. The guy looks bemused and he just repeats you're a dirty freaking C aren't you getting more and more simmering with rage, pointing at his chest. The guy is basically like WTF and then all of a sudden, he throws the wildest drunkest haymaker knocking the guy right into a table full of Chinese food which collapses making a pretty impressive noise and mess. 
The guy is on the floor freaking covered in shiny sauce and Sean picks up a pint glass and just tips it all over him. He finally seemed to calm down and then just shrugs as if to say what can you do says well. He is a dirty freaking see that fella and then strolls out casual as you like. I studied on a master's degree in finance which was known for being extremely high pressure and stressful, and both had my own, non-entertaining, breakdown as well as saw others. I'd seen things like a girl break down in tears during a lecture because of the sheer number of assignments we already had when another got assigned, a guy break his pen and just leave the lecture, and several screaming fights among students apparently over group projects. The best was actually pretty calm, though. We had some guy get invited in to talk about some financial security, I forget the name, and have totally left finance with no intentions to return, which effectively allowed you to profit if another person defaulted on their mortgage. About 10 minutes into the talk, this one student who everyone respected basically stood up and spent about 5 minutes completely talking this guy and his career into the ground. The guy kept looking around desperately and looked sheepish as crap, and after that, continued with his talk with the most awkward atmosphere with obvious disrespect just emanating from the students. He completely lost any authority in that room. Every question he got after was basically a snide, and people were openly laughing and booing at him. I think it was in part the unethical nature of the security peeing off a bunch of students who grew up with a recession, as well as him becoming the focus of everyone's collective stress. I'm a bagger at my local grocery store, first job, and we had just hired a new guy about 2 weeks earlier, anyways, this guy gets his 15 minute break and comes back on time as normal, only one problem, he is now high out of his mind, spends about 30 minutes unbagging groceries before management notices and pulls him aside to talk to him about it, also note, this guy hasn't spoken anything but gibberish for this time, but he freaks out, Starts yelling in his gibberish and throwing cans all around. Yep, that's it. What happened at your work which caused multiple people to all quit at once? The boss went off on a tirade on me for something that wasn't my fault and I got him to scream people like you are expendable pieces in this company and I can replace you tomorrow if I wanted to. 80% of the engineers quit the next day. Simply didn't show up. Including me. From what I know, the entire project folded because my now ex-boss couldn't find people to replace us because no one wanted to do the kind of work he was looking for at the salary he was paying. They decided after 6 years it was time to do a drug test. Even lost the CEO in that great idea. Cancelled all raises and bonuses for everyone except the CEO, his wife, financial and HR, and his son utterly useless IT, in a year where we have record profits and brought in almost double the clients on top of announcing they aren't looking to hire more people when we were already overwhelmed. Good part about it was when the majority of us quit they lost almost every single client shortly afterwards to their competitors and the company is now defunct. This feels really good to read. Word slipped out that the whole accounting department was being replaced so they all resigned all at once. My mom's company did that. Decided to outsource all the accounting staff, then was surprised that all the accountants quit, even the ones they wanted to keep on to help transition the books. She was one of the ones they asked to stay, and she refused lol. We stopped providing free coffee, and were so cheap that we sold our coffee maker. This was in Seattle, so a couple of people bought their own coffee makers to put in their cubes. That tripped the breakers several times so it was very disruptive since our computers would shut down. Management then said no coffee allowed in the office at all. We lost 4 very good engineers. Tattoo shop owner, who lived in another state, hired some butthole to come revamp the shop. I had been managing for 3 years at this point and he just expected me to teach him how to do my job so he could replace me. That guy had no clue how to run a shop. Plus the owner had been embezzling money for her coke habit and had blamed the longest standing artist at the shop for lost revenue. Accused him of stealing. I did the books. No one was stealing. She was nuts. Anyway, all the artists and I mutinied and left at the same time. Fricked them over good. With that idiot at the helm the shop didn't last a year after we all left. Many years ago in high school I worked at a movie theater. The place was pretty poorly run from the moment I started there. 
We never got paid on time and management was basically a bunch of lazy jerks who sat in the office talking all day and never actually did any managing. It would have been hard for things to have gotten any worse but after a couple of months they brought in new management who seemed to want to make it their personal mission to run the theater as poorly as possible. They first decided to implement a new policy requiring all projectionists to wear ties. Despite the fact that projectionists are never seen by the public, not to mention that tiny little detail that the projectionists worked around giant, rapidly spinning objects that a tie could get caught in, management refused to reconsider the policy and every single projectionist quit as a result. They then decided that the door people of which I was one, who were always scheduled 7 days a week, would now only be scheduled on the weekends and refuse to reassign any of us to concessions on the weekdays so we wouldn't lose hours. As a result, almost every single door person quit, including me. After that they started imposing impossible cleanliness standards on concessions. Things like requiring them to scrape popcorn kernels out of the cracks in the trim behind the popcorn machines. Concessions was there until 5am every night trying to meet their standards. Most of the concession people quit as a result. By my count the theater went from a staff of about 50 to a staff of about 12 in 3 weeks. I swung by about a month after I quit and found out that entire management staff had been fired and replaced yet again by an entirely new one. Ones who actually seemed to be running the theater properly. My best guess is that the previous management had been told to whip the theater into shape and they were idiots who had no idea how to effectively do that. I used to work at a grocery store. We had a manager who was hired to run the store but not be the franchisee and when his numbers were satisfactory enough, they would let him franchise it. So toward a year later and this guy was doing everything he could, making the store run and look wonderful and all the staff liked one another. Out of nowhere he is told they are putting in a franchisee bid and tell him that if he wants it, he can have it. He bids, but so does one of the district manager's sons. He gets it. Original manager is of course peed but accepts to stay as the grocery manager if he keeps pay rate. Fast forward and the new franchisee gets fired for not following regulations. They do the franchisee bid a second time and tell original manager the same thing. He can have it if he wants it. They give the store to another person a second time. I felt bad for the guy because all of his hard work and how well he treated me. Store starts going downhill causing a lot of change and a lot of paid off people. I was the first one to walk out as all of ours were cut. The new franchisee never spoke to anyone but would be if we didn't do things our way. I find out 14 more people quit within a month. We just had a company wide, except the directors of course, pay cut of 20% and a 4 day work week instead of 5. Everyone including myself are currently looking for work and they will lose their work for so so quickly. When I was 16, I worked in the concession stand at a minor league baseball stadium. Minimum wage at the time was $5.15 HR. This job paid $8. And it was always in the evenings so it was perfect work for a high school student. The only bad thing was our management was terrible. The main manager would throw toddler tantrums about once a shift over stupid BS. Like not ordering enough of a specific beer. She did the ordering. Or running out of pre-cut lemons for tea. One night the stadium was running a promotion and it was incredibly busy. Easily 2-3x the normal volume of customers. We were all working our butts off handling multiple roles each with absolutely no downtime. Although we all cleaned as we worked, nobody had a chance to do thorough cleaning for the whole shift because of the never ending horde of hungry baseball fans. The manager showed up 3-4 hours late per usual and throws the biggest freaking tantrum ever over the unswept floor. Finally, she announces listen up you lazy fricks. Minimal work gets minimal pay. Everybody is being paid minimum wage tonight because you slobs won't clean up anything. Both of our bartenders and the bar back quit on the spot, which caused a chain reaction. We all took off our aprons and hats to leave. She blocked the exit and was red in the face from screaming. So one of the cooks climbed out of one of the big serving windows where we served customers. So I did the same and most of the staff followed. Bear in mind that this all happened in front of like 200 plus customers. Of course, my final paycheck got lost so I had to file a wage theft complaint with the Texas Workforce Commission. Promised a bonus at the end of the year. Told everyone they will not be giving out bonuses due to the low company performance. Company had a successful year. Boss was in the middle of building a multi-million dollar home. 
brother-in-law manager just bought a nice home that year. I quit on the spot. Many others quit soon after. Oh freaking boy. I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings for a few years as a line cook. Two different stores. Same freaking pay. It was the type of work where you ask for a raise and they scoff and say yeah, me too. Anyways, I had been pretty dead set on quitting sooner or later. Our kitchen was very small. Most people ended up closing 4-5 days a week with doubles on the weekends, while still attending school full time as it was a college town. On Super Bowl freaking Sunday, a useless co-worker who ducked out in the bathroom most of the shift finally stopped showing, and in response the managerial staff delegated closing to my pal Jay. Dude was a freaking delight to be around. Hands down the best co-worker ever. Jay had told them that due to being a full-time student, he no longer wanted to be first in last out. 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. 1 a.m. on the weekends. They basically told him to go frick himself, and that they don't have any more shifts for him. Immediately, me and one other cook walked to the office and quit on the spot. Buffalo Wild Wings lost 4 cooks on Super Bowl Sunday, leaving them with 7 full-time students on the schedule. It was a managerial crap show. I was hired by the new owners to replace the existing manager. I was under the impression that he was moving on to another job somewhere. So after about 4 days I ask him where he's headed and if he's excited. He just looks blankly at me and says I'm not going anywhere. I'm just training you as the assistant manager, right? The look I gave him must have been a great tip off because he got up and walked into one of the new owner's offices. After about 30 seconds they were screaming at each other, then he just storms out of the office, grabs his stuff, give me the finger, and leaves. Over the next few days I'm trying to calm things with the employees. They're not faulting me, but now have a very bad taste in their mouths about the new ownership. Over about a 7-10 day time period my team shrank from 15 people down to 3. I hobbled along with that the best I could while we tried to hire new people, but the new owners were offering so little we had trouble finding people. After 3 months or so of that I started to get fed up and overwhelmed and when the owners started to get on me about missed deadlines I had had it. We were still only at 5 people, 2 of which were brand new and still training. They didn't allow me to refuse work or push deadlines out. They expected the same output as a 15 person team. So after my third day in a row of being berated for missing a deadline that was impossible to make, I quit. They laid off half the company with no warning. This included a gentleman who was less than a year from retirement and had been there for 35 plus years. The company was shocked when half the remaining people abandoned ship shortly thereafter. Worked at a Wendy's and one of the regional managers started running a store because they couldn't wouldn't find new managers to replace the old ones. Well anyways this guy practically ran the place into the ground. Before he started running the store most everyone liked working there as it was a good environment. A few months after, a couple of people quit because of him. And one day I roll in at 9 to help open the store and he comes out to my car as soon as I park. I was 15 minutes early and usually just sat in my car until 9. And tells me, hey I need to to start early because the three openers just quit on me. We managed to get the store open and had a number of people from other stores help run the place until the people from the next shift came in. A couple days later I hear the full story of what happened from a coworker. The regional manager is supposed to be at the store at 7 or so, and the openers 30 minutes later. He didn't actually show up until 8.30, so when the openers, already peed at being at work really early and not being on the clock, saw the regional manager roll in and knew it was gonna be an awful shift all decided that they were done with him and just quit right there. So at least 6 people quit because of him by the time I left the place. Probably more left after me. I did landscape construction. The cheap ass owner kept taking bigger and bigger projects while never hiring more help. We were all overwhelmed, stressed, and anxious as heck. One of our foremen quit and I followed suit a few days later. Two more guys quit the next day. He was down to three guys for the obscene amount of work he wanted to do. Of course everything gets way behind schedule but he's convinced it's not his fault at all. He went out of business less than a year later. I was working for a very large IT company. Before the tech bubble burst we had a meeting with our new director and the VP. They were tired of people complaining about things that should be changed at the job and how they managed people. 
so they sat around 200 of us down in our auditorium, and the director said she didn't want to hear any more complaints on how she was running things and if we didn't like them there was the door and that there was no way we'd leave such a great job. Well there was a mass exodus and probably close to 50 people left within 2 months. She and the VP were aorged and given zero reports. They were gone after a round of layoffs happened shortly after. I thought you were gonna say that it happened on the spot. Like she said in a rhetorical way if you don't like it then there's a door. And then to her shock the entire auditorium stands up and files out. I'm gonna pretend that's what happened because it's funnier. A well-known colleague committed suicide and we were told by management via a brief side note in an email about stats at the end of the day. It caused a lot of upset in the office and quite a few people didn't return after this. Owners retired. They were literally the greatest people. Both very sweet. But kept the place running like a well-oiled machine. They took pretty good care of us and their restaurant. When they left, they gave the restaurant over to their nephew who at the time was a busboy waiter kind of standoffish, didn't really interact with us too much, a bit lazy at times, but for the most part did his crap and went home, he seemed okay, until he got the power of being the owner, he fired 4 people, including 2 of the 4 cooks, and 2 of the 3 dishwashers, literally that same day, on a Friday night just before the dinner rush, all because he didn't like their attitude, he refused to allow people to take vacation that they'd already requested and gotten confirmed by the original owners, would change the schedule randomly without telling anyone and then scream at people when they missed a shift or came in late because of it, he'd refuse to replenish the kitchen until we were literally already out of things, then take forever to put in the orders, he showed up randomly and would drink at the bar, for free of course because he was the owner, and then bring in all his buddies to drink with him. Together they'd get way out of hand and grab at women and try to start fights. Within the first month of him being the owner, over half the staff had quit, usually walking out literally in the middle of their shifts. After being screamed at, they'd basically throw down their aprons and tell everyone else that they were so sorry but they couldn't do it anymore. After the last cook, this big dude who usually kept the kitchen laughing and running at a decent pace, started crying in the middle of his shift and dropped everything he was doing after the boss came and yelled at him for being too slow and making slop then walked out the rest of us just bailed along with him four months later the place was closed his aunt and uncle were absolutely furious and devastated that he'd run the business they'd built up for over 30 years into the ground they called everyone into a major company meeting and informed us we were all except for sales and managers being offshore to india and the philippines they had a plan for us training our replacements that, strangely, didn't account for pre-scheduled turnover. People started finding jobs literally the next week and the himahijing never stopped. They reviewed the cameras back 3 months to catch people coming in less than 3 minutes late and have them all write ups. Like 20 people walked out across the entire unit. New management. In a month. 4 kitchen staff quit, leaving me to be the only original kitchen staff hire from the previous manager. She completely changed the vibe of the workplace. No one was happy. No one felt like talking or listening to music or being friendly. It was robotic. Worked at a data company. The guys in the sales department fricked around all day. They'd literally be in the parking lot drinking beer and racing RC cars. When it came to handling accounts clients, they frequently gave away free accounts in order to retain customers, and make their own sales numbers look good, and somehow they got away with it. Meanwhile, there were dozens of programmers and database nerds working tirelessly behind the scenes to integrate a bunch of complicated data and make it easy to access via the website. A yearly holiday announcements come around, and upper management decides to send the entire sales team to Hawaii for an all-expense paid vacation. When the furious developers asked why they were just taking the sales team the confused ceo literally said well i mean i guess we could ask the sales team to pick one person from each department who helped them the most this year and take them too the programmers engineers database people were livid and walked out in droves gee i wonder why the company tanked that's the one way to totally screw your company pee off the people who keep it running Several years ago I worked in a mental health center. We worked primarily with kids. It was time for the center to renew their certification. Instead of keeping up with everything that needed to be done over the course of 5 years, the proper procedures were ignored. 
In this couple months before recertification, administration made us sit through a ridiculous amount of training on things that would have been covered in training such as HIPA laws and identifying child abuse, then came our paperwork. Our center encouraged us to do things that aren't exactly covered by Medicaid or approved through certification. For example taking kids to the park isn't allowed, but guess where they instructed us to take these kids so they didn't disturb the therapists working? I had to go back and edit 5 months worth of documents to get rid of the evidence. The kicker was that bathrooms were supposed to have a log of when it was cleaned. An administrator perfectly forged the signatures of multiple employees. I don't think they would have went through that trouble just for a bathroom log. What else were they forging our signatures on? The potential risk of being charged with Medicaid fraud was too high for me. I quit as did many others. Wasn't my office but one in my building. The old CEO retired, he was extremely well loved and very fair. His replacement was a lady not known for her social skills. She hired her sister as the new VP and passed over everyone who was in line for promotions. Literally everyone but the sister and the secretary quit the next week together to go work for a competitor. The former CEO had to come back to try and fix everything. He ended up having to help the new CEO hire basically a new company. I don't think it's going well. I feel bad for that old CEO. School district I sometimes sub in had a big round of hiring. A bunch of building substitutes applied for the jobs. And only about half of them got interviews. Of the subs that got interviews, myself included, the only one who made it past the screening interview was a relative of a current employee. The rest of us subs weren't the right fit. The real reason is that there's a substitute shortage and they don't want to lose any of us. Not a single sub, who isn't a relative, was hired for one of over a dozen teaching jobs. Many of the building subs are coming back next year. Working at a local restaurant that had recently changed owners, multiple issues came up. Difficulty getting off for important things, hiring people to work in kitchen who were bad at their job but cheap, cheaper ingredients, etc, as well as owner just kinda sat around and drank while they're not doing much. Things were tense and after a few months we were really just hanging in there cause we liked each other. Previous owners were a sweet old couple that set a great vibe. I know some others and I were already looking for a job. Anyways there was a young mother who waited tables there and really needed the job. Couldn't afford to be between jobs. One night she got to call that her grandmother had a severe stroke, was unresponsive, and was not expected to make it through the night. She asked to get off and start her 3 hours drive to Dallas. Manager says of course but the owner says no. Manager and owner got into a verbal fight in the back. The waitress ended up pleading her case, crying. Manager said that if the owner wouldn't let her go, he was done. Owner ended up firing them both on the spot. Within the next 15 minutes everyone who hadn't been recent hire ended up walking out of the building. I'm the manager of a retail store and I had found out a cashier was stealing product by scamming reward card benefits. I came up with a detailed incident report to present to this employee and I was under the assumption it was just her. After I confronted her in a reasonable manner she freaked out and got really angry and quit on the spot. She was using fake accounts instead of using a customer's reward card to get herself points and redeem them for product gift cards. So the customers weren't getting the points they are owed which is a headache for me if they notice and complain. The next day every other cashier called me and quit and after thinking WTF just happened I found out they were all in on it and were using this lady's fake card on their shifts too. So I'm down 4 cashiers and I have one left. This same day my last remaining cashier disappeared for 20 minutes. Turns out she was in the bathroom with another employee doing the nasty. She quits because her dad is a cop and doesn't want to find out she got fired for this and she also asked me if she should go to urgent care because she didn't take her tampon out before they did it and she couldn't find it. The guy also quit because he didn't care and was moving anyway. I was down to literally managers only. So the first part is the mass exodus and the last part was just for can you believe this crap? The owner died and his idiot son took over and decided that the company didn't make him enough money and started to implement cost cutting measures like turning off the AC in the building. Worked in construction as part of a HSE team. The chief engineer was peed that the job was taking slower because of the HSE, especially safety, procedures, 
We had the couple lost time incidents at this point and just a week before a guy almost died. But he was still pretty peed about the delays so he got everyone in a room to say. You're not here to do your jobs. You're here to do what I tell you to do. 20 people asked to quit on the spot. Freaking C. Turned out our owner was keeping the social security money taken from our paychecks. And yes, he was caught. I worked at a discount store and it wasn't that bad at first, until one of our night managers quit and was replaced with, well, let's call her, Becky. So Becky seemed nice at first but we all started to notice her changing a lot of things around the store. People on the night crew got moved today, she gave people weird orders, and most of the time she wouldn't even be at the front when we needed her. She used to keep her phone on her all the time, like on a phone call constantly, so she was always on the phone with her partner, who happened to be a manager from a neighboring store. One day someone stole a box of candy from the store and she literally went out there and got into a fist fight with them, which is a huge no no, you're not supposed to go after a customer like that even if they did steal. So Becky comes in all bloodied in the face and we're not really sure what to say or do, so we all just look away and get back to work. After that she acted really really weird, throwing people under the bus and claiming we weren't doing our jobs, which is funny cause she was never up front when we needed her. What ended up making pretty much the whole night crew quit was when Becky started getting grabby with one of our younger cashiers, and the girl was already in a bad place and didn't want to lose her job, so she tried to ignore it for a bit. But one day Becky tried to get the cashier in her car to take her home since she didn't have a ride, and the girl wasn't comfortable with it. She ended up calling me to come get her. She rejected Becky's approaches. So Becky went on full petty mode and claimed the cashier had drugs on her and told the cashier to go home. The next day the younger cashier was fired. So the younger cashier tried to tell our DM about it but he said there was nothing he could do. This was the last straw for everyone and most of us quit within the month. They bought air mattresses so employees wouldn't have to leave to go home during a classically busy season. Mass exodus after that. Just sleep here. Don't go home to your families or home where you can destress. Just be here. Never leave. Or, and follow my logic here sir, you can kiss the fattest and most robust part of but cause I quit. They tried to make us do a third straight 16 hours shift while telling us off we were taking too long. This was years ago as a basic box mover in a courier company. They cut their staff in half and still expected us to do the same amount of work. It got bad enough the head office people came down to supervise us at the end of shift. We stopped taking any breaks and worked well past our hours without overtime. The second day they were there, our immediate supervisor of our team, about 10 of us, asked for the night off next week Christmas Eve and most of us had family, and the bosses refused, we all quit, their entire workforce quit in less than 10 minutes, there were 3 people in the office that morning when the other 300 of us walked out, most of the other workers were pretty disgusted in how they treated us, enough to pack in their jobs. They called within an hour and offered us all pay rises and actually hiring people to help with the workload. It didn't help. They already screwed themselves trying to save money on wages so they were never going to make their deliveries. A month earlier. It may have made a difference but a week before Christmas? The company consistently outpaced competing firms and found itself emerging as one of the industry leading agencies. This was also a California tech firm. So shorts. Flip flops. Beers at lunch, getting high on the roof were all rather common, but we were rapidly growing, and the atmosphere location made us a hot ticket for talent. Anyway, CFO and CMO cashed out and the CEO decided to totally remodel the company by making it far more corporate. On top of all of this, they implemented unattainable goals and removed our work from home policy. The final straw was they removed our rather generous vacation policy and replaced it with unlimited vacation which was a facade for you can take as much vacation as you want if we approve it. Like one stroke fourth of the company quit and immediately landed at better jobs. Also profit tanked. Our company is doing incredible, let's change everything. Worked at a deep underground mine. The mine had always had issues due to the geology wanting to collapse. Think lumps of rock falling the size of houses. The geotechnical engineers stated the mine was not in their opinion safe. Management disagreed, not geotechnical. At the same time, the mine in cost cutting had no serviceable rescue chambers. 
Little steel boxes that are your lifeline when things go bad. Then, mine rescue was abandoned. The only people who can get you out when the worst happens. These were not popular changes. Hum. I wonder who I should listen to about if a mine is safe. Geotechnical engineers or middle managers. This is a hard one. Our boss had a beating and announced new policy that all salaried employees had to work a minimum of 45 billable hours per week because of the increased project load we had. I pointed out to a few co-workers that our employment contract specified 37.5 hours per week, and that I would be adhering to that policy. Well, about a week later I was laid off due to lack of projects. Ha, huh, I was happy to go, and at least two others left voluntarily within the week. The job I found next was much better, and wasn't run by someone quite so clueless about how to treat people. For me it wasn't what happened, but what didn't happen. We were making only about $2 above minimum wage, around $11, to do tech support for a web-based startup. A college degree was required for the position so we all had large amounts to pay off in student loans, but weren't really making enough to do so and still pay for rent, groceries and other life expenses. Three of us, there were four in addition to me, had other part-time jobs in addition to this full-time, 40-hour week position because we couldn't survive otherwise. Every other position in the company was being paid quite a bit more so we didn't exactly feel valued. We got sick of this and were talking with each other how abysmal the pay was in addition to less than glamorous, and often frustrating, work. We also didn't get any PTO or bonuses and there was pretty little momentum for moving up in the company, so at our next team meeting, we asked our supervisor if we could discuss our pay grade and the opportunity for a raise. We had all started at the same time, during a very busy time of the company as it was undergoing a platform transition, and there were no higher members on our team aside from our supervisor. We felt like we had all put in good work and deserved equal recognition. Our supervisor flipped out at us, saying that we should never talk about our compensation with any co-workers, and that we could potentially get a raise in a year or so but that our inability to pay expenses wasn't the company's concern. So of all us found other jobs and bounced within the next two months, leaving them to start over with a brand new staff during the busiest season of the year. Employers that say you cannot discuss your pay with co-workers make me livid. Not discussing compensation only benefits the company. Glad you got out of there. I used to work at a McDonald's, and we had a terrible manager who hated a lot of people working there. Everyone else hated him too, but no one wanted to call him out on his crap and quit. I was the first to do it, because I requested two weeks off in August of that year, about three months in advance. My family likes to plan our summer vacations early on. When August came around he had my schedule set up for all of August off except for those specific two weeks. There was no way that he could have misinterpreted my request. When I got my schedule, I stormed into the restaurant, called him out on everything, and then quit on the spot. About two weeks after that, I heard from one of my work friends that five other people had enough and quit as well. I kind of felt good to be the first. Random witness drug test at a chemical refinery. 45 people just stood up and walked out the door. They just went to refine chemicals elsewhere. About 15 years ago, a company I worked for announced as a way of keeping from having to lay off anyone else in the already bare bones crew. They announced 10% pay cuts were coming in a month. It took me a week to find a new job at the same pay. I took it. Lots of people quit within that one month time frame. About a year later, the place came back to me with an offer well above what I was making previously. When I started back at work, that's when I found out everyone who stayed was still getting paid less than they were before the pay cut. I felt like I hacked a system by refusing to take a pay cut. My girlfriend at the time got fired because she gave me a hug on my birthday and she was leaving for the day. The owners of the store got onto us a couple of weeks prior to the incident about flirting in the store, which only happened if there was no one in the store, but we listened to them and apologized and stopped the flirting. So she gets fired and leaves and they call me to the back to talk to me about why they did it. I told them they freaked up and they could close the store that night. They have no knowledge of their products. So I walk out and meet up with her and another girl that worked there. The other girl's boyfriend was still on the clock and left for his lunch to meet up with the three of us. He calls during his break and tells them he's not coming back and that his girlfriend did the same thing. 
It's a small store, but they lost their entire staff in the span of 30 minutes. It's crap like this that makes me wonder how economies even exist. I worked at a large national law firm in one of their Bay Area offices. There was a weird and intense rivalry with the other Bay Area office, to the point that our office manager forbade us from asking for help from their office in any capacity, including coverages or help with a client. Our office was smaller and tight-knit, and we also billed more per quarter. The office manager was helpful and our managing partner was great. One day, our managing partner was offered her dream job at another firm, and she put in her intent to leave. We didn't know who our new manager would be at first, but as soon as it was announced that the SF office was moving part of their staff over, three stroke fourths of our office quit on the spot, attorneys and admin staff, and went to another firm. Those of us who remained realized why we never worked with SF. And slowly but surely we were fired over minutia. It took them about two years to get rid of all of us. Great times. Over-reliance on institutional knowledge. Basically, it was company non-policy not to bother documenting anything. Never to create procedures. Never to get wrapped around the axle by planning. Etc. So the jobs basically lurched from crisis to crisis aimlessly in the name of being biased towards action and not getting bogged down by bureaucracy. As such. Getting anything at all done meant finding the person who already had the knowledge in their head and relying on them to remember how they addressed a specific issue previously. Annual maintenance was effectively a scheduled crisis with everyone fumbling to remember exactly what they did a year ago, or to adapt memories of previous crises into a solution for the current crisis. Then one day, a multi-decade employee got sick of the dysfunction and left for greener pastures. This gaping hole meant that simple problems became crises and genuine crises became group hysterics. This made an already toxic environment almost comically radioactive, and within two or three months, over three quarters of the department had left the company. I'm a shipwright and about 10 years ago I worked on a shipyard and the owner decided it was a good idea to bring someone in to look at how we work to see if things can be done more efficiently and smarter. Nothing wrong with that except the guy he brought in didn't have a clue what it takes to build a boat from scratch. So one day we had a meeting in the break room. The owner and this guy were there and first they asked the metal guys what their thoughts are on how to improve things. They say they need new welding equipment and some other stuff. No problem, we're going to take care of it. The painters are next, same thing. Then the mechanics, same thing again. And then they got to us and things fell apart. Now here's the thing that's true for all shipyards I've ever worked on. Shipwrights always come last when we need new tools or whatever but everyone always comes to us to solve a problem. We keep the place going so you'd think we got what we asked for. Instead they tell us we have everything we need and we just have to improvise. We all looked at each other and we told them we're done. Frick you. Frick your shipyard and frick everything. We all packed our tools, got in our cars and drove home. Our company relocated from a small suburb to a large city. Pretty much everyone had to take public transportation to get there. My supervisor was firm in only allowing two work from home days a week. I told him I was exhausted and having one more WFH day would make a huge difference, but he wouldn't budge. I told him I would need a raise, because I was spending hundreds of dollars a month on transportation, and it felt like I had been demoted. He refused. I was offered another job, and I took it. He was shocked that I was leaving. About a month later, all but the worst employee had either left the company or left his department. My company asked the office what we'd do if they moved our location about an hour away. We said we'd all quit. They didn't move. NSW. Gone wild posters who show their face. What do you do for a living? Has it ever been a problem at work? I'm a marketing manager for a company I've been with for almost 8 years. I've posted a good 15 face photos over the years, alongside a ton of body only posts. I'm on my third username, but, about 4 years ago one of my co-workers found me on reddit. Everyone else in the company got a look, including the owner. Alas, I'm still here, huh, I'm managing the frick out of some marketing. Until you click on her username, she both does and does not post these images. There was a GW Plus poster that I recognized at a hospital. It was kind of surreal to wake up and look and see a poster from a website I visited. I never said anything to her, but she looked even prettier in person. She hasn't posted on her Reddit account in months which sucks. 
Hope she's doing okay. Unexpectedly wholesome. I'm a PA for a photographer and I do doggy daycare in my home. It actually helps with my PA work and so far only one dog owner has recognized me. However it did cause issues at a past job. I used to work at an in-home daycare. One of the parents discovered all my stuff. They pulled their kid from daycare and threatened to call the cops. I had done nothing illegal and all my photos were taken when I was off work. My boss couldn't just fire me because she had known about me posting beforehand. So she just kind of made things heck for me until I quit and moved to a different state. Not GW but FetLife. I started a new job as a supervisor at a clinic about 2 weeks ago and on day 2, one of the techs in the back handed me a post. It note that said FetLife I was brand new and caught off guard so I just kind of laughed it off and said something to the effect of oh yeah ha. I was growing a little concerned because he started making an effort to flirt and behave unprofessionally with me, but then he was suddenly fired for god knows what by the doctor so the issue kind of resolved itself. I'm a dude. I've done webcoming on Chatterbot for like 5 years or so. Not enough to make a living but enough for some extra beer money or whatever. I made sure that my Chatterbot username has no real ties to my real name and as far as I know, nobody in my real life knows I do it. So as of now it hasn't affected me in any way whatsoever. However, if you google my Chatterbot username, my face pops up all over the place. So, that's not great. I'm suspecting it will come and bite me in the butt later in in life, but there isn't anything I can do about it now. In retrospect, I was a little reckless in both username selection and comment replies. Multiple attempts at blackmail, people not believing I was the male and trying to get more nudes personal videos and threatening to tell my boss. I'm an electrician that works for a family owned company. My boss doesn't care. Lucky, I guess. Affected new relationships past relationships, the occasional stranger, once someone local finds out, they share, it spreads, I deleted as much of my content as I could about 2 weeks ago, we'll see how it goes, you could report the blackmail and scare them back, while I would love to post my face, I would definitely be fired, like, without hesitation, I'm a bit jealous of everyone who can post without worrying about their personal lives affecting their livelihood and profession, I was a Gonuald poster in college. My trig tutor, another student, recognized me, sent me a PM that said hey, I know you, really cool to see someone I know, you look great he was a great guy, never told anyone who hassled me, I kind of liked the idea of him jacking off to me, he's the only reason I passed trig, one other person I knew knew about it, he didn't really mention it, that's about it, not really exciting. No issues from it, I didn't post for too long, maybe just a year, also I paid him for the tutoring, it was an equal exchange of services, he doesn't magically deserve, nor did he expect, freaking just for being nice and finding photos, there was also a yearish gap between him tutoring me and seeing my posts, so we weren't really friends or anything at the time, it was really cute though that his message also said it's, name. I tutored you, not sure if you remember me, like we were friends and went to Frankenmuth together. Yes I remember you silly. Not on reddit but online we found lingerie pictures and half nudes of our teacher when I was back in high school. Everyone knew but no one asked her, for obvious reasons. However because it was on a photography blog I guess it could have passed as being artistic work and the school didn't bother about it. My ex was a teaching assistant and one of the parents found photography blog photos of her and the school she worked at made her contact the website photographer to have them removed or she would be disciplined investigated fired. She had the photos removed, then Ray uploaded under a pseudonym instead and the school was fine with that, oddly enough. I'm a nurse. So far, no one has admitted to knowing I post and I made it a strict rule that no one I casually interact with will ever know that username. Taking booty pics by night, saving lives by, also night. Posted pics to GW, had a person find my office through the pics, but he just wanted engineering work. There are so many humorous ways to imagine that man staring at a hot girl and coming to some realization of, oh, yeah, I was supposed to be hiring someone for, this task. I used to actually post some on Ladovan as GW and was actually received very kindly. I had a lot of DMs and was actually really liking it. 
However, later on when I got a girlfriend I figured it would be best to stop doing that as she would not be a fan of my pictures online. It's just weird because I felt a lot more confident from people telling me such kind things about my body, especially when I don't have a great image of myself. And also, I am not currently in a career job right now, so it wasn't so much an issue with work relations or anything like that. Comma however, later on when I got a girlfriend I figured it would be best to stop doing that as she would not be a fan of my pictures online. You are quite the catch. I haven't seen your pics but that was a nice thing to do for her. I worked with a lady who had done videos of herself doing the cake farts, meatloaf farts, peanut butter farts, etc. She's pretty nice and it was very surprising to find out, especially since we worked together in childcare. No one there really cared what she did on her own free time. We just all giggled about it a lot. When I see her grocery shopping, I do find myself wondering if she plans on farting on anything she's bought. I'm a GW poster who only shows part face, and not full face, because I know that it would seriously jeopardize my future career endeavors. My current job already required an extensive background check and it really re-emphasized that idea. HR probably would not be accepting as well lol. When discussing conversing with clients, it would jeopardize my credibility if they knew about my GW posting. My intention for posting on GW type subreddits is that I enjoy the exhibitionistic aspect. This is already satisfied from what I already post, no face. Though I'm sure I could be more popular if I showed face, there's not a good enough reason for me to justify jeopardizing my career. However, I've had the pleasure to get to know various lovely GW posters who show face, and a number of them use SSLs, clip sites, many vids for example, cam sites, etc to make a living. That would be awkward during an interview or a yearly evaluation to be brought up. I work in hospitality, and most of my co-workers know what I do on the side. Mostly we joke about it and I share my successes, as well as rant about all the silly messages I get. I've had one customer pull me aside very politely to tell me he had seen my nudes online. He genuinely wanted to make sure they were posted with my knowledge. It was quite heartwarming. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few more customers who recognize me and are too shy to say anything. I love the exhibitionism, so it's all good with me. I'm getting my PhD though I have a few side jobs as well, and it's never been a problem for me at work. I research P for a living, so posting it is hardly likely to affect me much. Op at a serious tag. Makes me wish that our ask reddit was a place for serious only submissions. I had a friend who was a redditor. She was your typical, shy, awkward type personality. She was a receptionist. I found her in Gone Wild when I was feeling it, but it completely killed my mood. It wasn't anything big, just her unbuttoning her shirt to show her bra and boobs. I didn't want to confront her about it because that would have been awkward as heck. But the post was later deleted and I saw in her Facebook that she had been fired. And I'm pretty sure it was related. I mean, she was hard working and there wasn't any good reason to fire her. Unfortunately, she killed herself later. It was found in her suicide note that she had been blackmailed for freaking and that was her main reason. I will always miss you Sharon. That's freaking awful. I really hope this story is a lie. I hired one of the ladies. She was fantastic. Confident, intelligent and capable. Her interviews, including panel portion, were strong. As it came to make the decision, a gentleman came to me privately and said he does not think she would be a good fit for the company. He told me about the pictures and said all of the guys at work have seen them. I was a bit taken aback. I worked for a company that proudly labeled itself socially conscious. The employees were proud of their diversity and inclusion, as we should. But it seemed these guys were immature and their open-mindedness only went so far. I was extremely disappointed in them, not her or the pictures. I hired her and made it clear to HR the actions of the guys. No way was it going to be held against her. Luckily it was not, she did great, was promoted several times and an awesome asset to our team and company. This is a wholesome comment. You sound like a tremendous manager. I post in NSW subs, and I don't use a throwaway. My Tumblr got passed around and when confronted about it I just sort of shrugged it off like I have boobs. 
I guess you know what color my nipples are now. It's never been an issue at work really. Everyone's really nice about it that knows. I work at a video game store and I'm sure others have found my nudies but as I said, I have a positive attitude towards freaking and my body. If they misbehave it just reflects poorly on them. I've posted to GW several times but never showed my face. However, I was a cam model for about 6 months and a stripper for about 6 months before that. It's not yet been a problem, except that my brother found out because he snooped on my old Reddit profile. He was cool about it though. Anyway, I literally spend an hour or more a day DMCA takedown requesting my old cam vids that people recorded. Which means endlessly scouring P sites for videos of myself. I'm a GW poster who does not show face. But I know quite a lot of my colleagues make their living from posting raunchy stuff here on Reddit. See subreddits such as Aunt's Fwubu Eyes, RS Cells, RS Ting, etc. Many of them also expand to Manivids and others for additional income, but have a large Reddit fan base. I have occasionally shown my face. It's hard for me to hide my identity in GW posts as I have a few prominent tattoos that are easily recognizable. I own my own hair salon and it's never been an issue. Never been a problem at work, but was stopped by a police officer once. Don't I know you from somewhere? Me. I don't think so. You sure about that? The look on his face was the only thing that made me think he might have recognized me from Reddit or a cam site. Have also been recognized on Tinder several times. A lot of them make money here on Reddit or with other sites. SX sells. Some people just want one specific girl to do one specific pee. I met an Australian girl who was an escort before she joined the Australian army. According to her most European countries are not as uptight about the cardinal sins of being naked. I've thought about what would happen if nudes of me leaked out and other than my own embarrassment I'm pretty sure I'd be fine. I'm an adult. I work with adults. And if someone harassed me over the pictures I could just take them to HR. We all get naked every day. It's really not a big deal. I know Australia is not Europe. As an English speaker, I am just stating that Europe, America and Australia are some of the largest colonies that have equal development and similarities from my perspective. According to her most European countries are not as uptight about the cardinal sins of being naked. Despite what Eurovision tries to peddle, Australia is not a part of Europe and we really don't adhere to the same sort of social norms as them either. As far as nudity etc are concerned we're as uptight as America. Three words. That's not me. The shaggy defense is undefeated. Hi, I'm a student and will probably stop posting, maybe even remove some of the more incriminating photos, once I get a real job or otherwise think it's time to move on. I don't want to discourage anyone from having fun, but what isn't a problem now may be later. The internet is forever and facial recognition software is only getting better. May it be irrelevant to your future endeavors. Good luck. I'm a GW girl who doesn't show my face. Actually I post to quite a few nude subs. A few of my friends know because I have some recognizable tattoos. One of these friends is a real creep about it. He commented on one of my posts saying that I had shown nearly half my face and asking when I'd show the rest. I haven't posted since. Partly because I'm creeped out and partly because I'm pee off. Makes me want to tell his fiance, but I won't. I work with special needs kids and children with behavioral problems. One of the kids dad found me. He's since become quite a fan. I know if his wife finds out she'll at least try to get me fired and I'll probably never see her kids again. I've bonded with her kids too much for that. I don't know if work would fire me. Probably not. Also an ex-girlfriend from before I was tattooed found out because she recognized my boobs and cute nipples. That was pretty funny. And my favorite is a local, mildly famous radio DJ was a fan for a while last summer. Makes things slightly awkward when I see him at events, but it's still fun. My boyfriend and I are big fans of this DJ so that's why it's my favorite. Sorry, that was so much more than just work stuff. Friend. Delivered pizza in college, was posting plenty of pics, M, at the time. Deleted them all after this one woman kept requesting me as a delivery driver. She was ordering salami pizza 4x per week which is fairly as unusual and only wanted me to deliver. Finally I asked her about it and she said she wanted the salami pizza and invited me in. My jaw dropped. I left the pizza 
and quit after my shift ended. Now I don't post photos. Only fictional stories about delivering pizza. Username checks out. I post to GW+, and I haven't shown my whole face yet, but partially. Probably enough to be recognized. I write erotica for a living. If anything, it might help my career. I also don't care if my family or friends find out. My family has always been very positive about physicality. My friends are pretty open-minded. I typically only post things that are not too p-graphic. I don't think there's a big deal about showing your boobs. Never have. I've shown my face before, and I do show face in any private communications. It's never been a problem for me. As for work, let's just say I'm a scientist. My employer knows everything what I do online as a protection against blackmail, and they're totally cool with it. It's actually quite liberating. Let's just say I'm a scientist. This has me more curious than I am about whatever you do online. T I had an ex who posted my nudes to Gonyo Island 4chan without my consent. I was incredibly freaked out by it as one of them had my face in it, and generally just didn't want photos of my body on the internet. Luckily I have yet to have an incident where someone recognizes me or has seen them. I post my dong but I'm pretty careful to never have my face in the shot. As it is, one of my friends I guess recognized my bedroom or something. He didn't say anything about it. Just called me by my username casually once. Man oh man has it become a problem. I personally have encountered the creepers of the creeps. I've, so far, had one person threaten violence on me if I didn't take up his offer on my RAOMD post. I had another man who took it upon himself to google image search my nails and found the damned nail salon I had gone to, then proceeded to stalk me on social media. One of my kinks is showing off for people in an anonymous way. Unfortunately my tattoos are extremely recognizable and I'm going to have to cut my time on GW and other subs. Short, some people just don't know how to keep private things private. I work in a small office, I'm new to Reddit but I've been posting pics online for a while. One lady saw me posting on my phone once and she will give me an odd look from time to time but other than that I've never had a problem at work. I've had a couple people from high school notice me here already. They just seem excited to see me. Naughty boys. My friends and family all know what I do and most are okay with it and some are even really supportive. I work in a men's salon. I haven't had anyone mention it, so I doubt anyone knows. The only person that has said something was my ex who mentioned a girl he knew said she saw my sub. Oh well. Posted some with face before. Didn't think too much about it but then someone found me on Facebook which was a little weird. Deleted the face pics and nothing came of the FB ad. Just an eager fan with some boundary issues. I used to be pretty popular in some of the GW subreddits, but don't post so much anymore. I have large, visible, distinctive tattoos and I show face in every post. There is literally zero denying that it is me in these photos. I definitely did it for the exhibitionist feels, but it was nice to have people comment on my eyes as well as my tea. When I started, I worked in tech support for a pretty large company and I still worked there when I was at my peak of posting and popularity. I wonder a lot who had seen my posts as I walked around, but it just added to the excitement for me. No one ever brought up whether they had seen me posting or not in person. But anytime someone mentioned reddit around me, I'd look at them trying to figure out if they were just redditors or if they were bringing reddit up because I had seen their posts and to try to breach the topic and eventually talk about my posting. I shared my username with a couple of people that I fricked that worked there as well, as well as a few friends. I've never really been concerned about people finding me that know me. I've had a few people reach out to me to let me know that I know them and their fans, and it's always kind. Not creepy, and totally respectful. I just had someone reach out to me the other day on here who I worked with for like 2 months over 3 years ago, so I don't know if people are still stumbling across me or what, but I'm very curious who all has seen me on here and then seen me at work in my current job. There are significantly less employees, but I've been there for longer than most people, have a pretty visible position, and I know there are a lot of redditors in the office. I'm also super curious if anyone has met me and recognized me instantly as you vonnegut vixen. 
My brother knew my Gone Wild account for a bit and I had no idea until he made a hey. I like your piercing comment I roll to frick with me. It worked. I froze. Comma what? A guy posting. When I was in college I would post nudes to different subreddits. The attention went to where my brain should have been and I eventually started showing my face as well as everything else. About 2 months after I posted my first face pic my manager called me into his office for a one on one meeting. I was a summer student at an investment company and I only had a few weeks left to go so I figured he wanted to talk about scheduling a performance review or something like that. Nope. Apparently his wife had found my pictures recognized me, and wanted to know if I would be interested in having a threesome with them. A few things to note, my manager's wife was a smocker shell, out of his league, out of my league, yet somehow here we were and that was the only reason I didn't get up and leave right away. Did I think she was cruising reddit looking for strange? No that seemed more like her creepy husband's bag but I'm nothing if not an optimist and I didn't really think refusing my boss point blank was the best option. Fast forward to the weekend and I'm ringing the doorbell at my boss's house. He answers in a robe and beckons me inside. Apparently his wife was running late but he suggested that he and I start without her. Turned around and left without a word. Deleted all my nudes. Reddit accounts. Deactivated my social media and basically prepared myself for my world to fall apart. I went to work on Monday. Saw my manager. We both acted like nothing ever happened but it was hard not to picture him in his robe. Tuesday evening my phone rings. It's my manager's wife. Turns out she actually was running late and was sorry that I left before she got there. She got worried when she saw that I had deleted my Reddit account. She told me that she and her husband had an open marriage and they liked playing with others. We made plans to meet up that weekend. I ring the bell. My boss answers, in a different robe, and tells me that he had some reading he needed to get done but that his wife and I should start without him. We're all still friends. He and his wife are amazing people and they have one of the strongest marriages I know. No more faces in my nudes though. That could have ended way differently. TL. DR. Boss invites for threesome after recognizing my nudes. Tries to make a move on me when wife isn't there. Wife invites me back for actual threesome. More questionable robe choices. Fricked. Still friends to this day. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.